Hi guys. So first off, I want to start by saying that no, this is not a mirage. And this is going to be like a mukbang, mukbang type of video because I'm hungry and I just came from an interview. So if you don't want to watch me eat, I completely understand. Um, I'm actually just like trying to sit down and tell you guys what's been going on with me since the last time you guys saw my video. So if you guys would like to see what's going on and you don't mind me eating <laughs> in the process, um, also you might see my cats and hear my cats and that's just the way it's gonna be. So if you guys wanna find out what's going on with me, stay tuned and I will tell you. <laughs> okay, so first starting off, I went to L&L &L Hawaiian Barbecue and I got a mini katsu chicken plate with just macaroni this is what it looks like guys and also lumpia i'm not gonna eat all this at once don't trip i just really love their lumpia their lumpia is so good and then i just have some water here you're gonna see me drinking out of a wine glass with ice because i'm extra like that and that's just the way i live my life so we'll just get started and you know we'll go from there guys so i hope everyone is well you guys oh my god it's been so long since i talked to you guys so the last video you saw me do was in i believe june of 2018 and i was just trying to encourage everyone because my depression was at an all-time high and um i still want you guys to be encouraged and i hope everyone is doing well my first off start there so after that video my depression ended up getting really bad like it went worse than I had actually wanted it to. Um, I was in a really bad place um, to the point where, um, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I had actually wrote out letters to everybody in my life and was like, oh, thank you for being around and continue to be great and whatever I liked about them. And I'm sorry, I'm writing down something because I have a little list of things just to remember. Um, and um, was basically saying, you know, when I leave here kind of thing, um, you know, just continue to push forward and be great and do these great things, right? So in the process of me being like super depressed and stuff like that, I had actually um, got a call from my mom or whatever. And she was like, well, I'm just calling to check on you. I'm sorry, I have to adjust myself. Oh shit. I'm just calling to check on you and see how you're doing and blah, 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 blah right? So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm sorry, I have to get into these movies. Like I love them hot. Like I love my food fresh, hot, off the grill, and I just got it from the restaurant. So, my God. So, she was like, I'm gonna come check on you. And it was at the time where I was writing the letters that I had just wrote like the last letter. And she was like, yeah, I'll just come and check on you. I feel like something's not right. So mom's always not right. And then I was just telling her I was really sad and I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't get past it. So um, let me backtrack a little bit. So in January of 2018, 2018 was a really, really, really hard year for me. Like really hard mentally, physically, and emotionally. It was really hard. So in, in January, I was working for a company and I can't say their name because literally they could sue me. Um, so... I was working for a company and um, I got injured on the job and they let me go while I was on workers comp. So that's all I can really say about it because legally, I don't want no beef. You know, I don't want that smoke. Um, this is a multi, probably billion dollar company. It's really, really, really rich. So um, more money than I've ever had in my entire life. So uh -uh, I'm not fooling with it. Uh -uh. Uh, just know they let your girl go on workers comp right so i was like okay great that was cute and you're not supposed to do that it's illegal in california right i don't know about everywhere else so i can only talk about where with the state i'm in so they were like okay blah blah, blah right so they let me go and then i was still injured right so I went to all the appointments, the occupational medicine appointments, blah, 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 whatever. So I was still injured and I couldn't work. Oh, sorry. I couldn't work for like, who almost two months, right? And I know you're like, okay, that's not a big deal. But if you work, you know, two months is like a wrap. So thank God I have parents who could help me at the time. 
Um, they helped, they gave me like a loan so I could pay them back kind of thing. I'm sorry, I know it's a mukbang, but I really don't like people seeing food in my mouth like that. Um, so that's what happened, right? They helped me with that and I ended up like just falling behind on like a car, a couple car payments and stuff like that because I was injured. So I had to go back to work because I couldn't get unemployment. They would not approve me for some reason. And I had to go back to work um, sooner than I wanted to. I was still very much injured. Um, I had all kind of tests done, x-rays, MRIs. Sorry, it's a cat hair stuck on me. Um, MRIs, all that shit, right? And just, it was a mess, child. It was a mess. Oh, so fast forward after all that um yeah so back to yeah january february march were a clusterfuck of of trying to get this company to act right and they ended up letting me go right so april fast forward to april um april was okay but i was also at that time um having severe it's just this is women problems right now okay severe um like a pelvic floor pain which I have a condition which makes the muscle in the pelvic floor tighten up so much that it causes extreme pain and at the time they could not figure out what was going on and this had been from August of 2017 that this was going on so also I was just continuously bleeding like for no reason it wouldn't stop um so they kept trying to put me on stuff and I wouldn't stop I wouldn't stop bleeding I wouldn't stop having pelvic pain so about oh a year and some change of that from 17 to 18 um about around December is when I got a shot called Lupron so if you have any of those conditions ask your doctor about a Lupron shot because um that's the only thing that stopped me from bleeding and having extreme pain now they say this can happen to anybody. Um, it doesn't matter your size, your weight, your color. It doesn't matter. It can happen to anyone. Um, so don't be like, oh, it's because you're overweight. Blah, blah. No, bitch. It's because it can happen to anybody. I don't want to hear no shit, okay? So now that's over. I don't want to go too much into the vagina pain. Just know that right now God is touching that part of my life. So. And also, <laughs> another great thing, well, one of the good things that actually happened in 2018 is when I, I got into a relationship, um, but I've known this person for six years. So we dated for about um, eight, eight or nine months, and then we decided, hey, you know, we want to, you know, make it like official kind of thing. So our one year anniversary is actually coming up, which I'm super excited about. And one of my best friends is getting married in April. Yay! and Squan in China doll. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, so my, me and my boo are going to the wedding and everything like that. So that's a good thing that happened, the, the engagement and all that great stuff. Um, Cause she got engaged last year and she asked me in July to be her maid of honor, but she changed her mind. She, well, not maid of honor, I'm so sorry, bridesmaid. And she changed her mind and didn't want to do it that way. So. I still feel a part of the wedding, you know, I just want to make sure like if there's anything I can do to help, I am. So I'm going to go help her like set up and stuff like that the night before the wedding for the reception and things like that. But yeah, so yeah, me and my booski, almost a year. <laughs> so, all right. So the next thing is not that great. So let me take a sip of my water gel. This one, this might be a longer mukbang or whatever our video but whatever i haven't seen you guys in a while so i'm just gonna tell you what's been going on so you might hear paris is going back around because scar has been yelling for some reason just randomly we don't know what's gonna happen i'm never prepared so just so you know so and in the process of all this by the way i have been job hunting and looking for jobs and i just went to another interview today that's why my makeup's kind of softer than, not, yeah, a little softer than normal. And then, you know, this one, it was a really good energy. Like, the lady was so nice. And, like, we just had a connection. Like, I'm just like, yes. But the thing is, before I went to this interview, I was like, I feel really good today. I had, I was in a really good mood, which has been kind of rough lately because, um, okay, before I tell you about the big thing. Um, 
fat backtrack. <laughs> um, at the beginning of March, I had started a new job. So if you follow me on any social media, um, you know I have posted about it. I post about it on Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook, right? Um, and I was like, oh, I got a new job. Thank God. It's a blessing because I have been looking for a job since I left Lush, which was August 2017. Okay. And I have been through plenty of interviews and I have applied through many websites. I've gone in. My resume is all over the internet. Okay, baby. Um, so I was like, finally, right? I was like, thank God. A week later, they fired my ass. That's not funny. But I'm just like, damn, can I catch a break? I was devastated though. Like I was really upset. I was crying for like a day and a half because it was just like, it wasn't just, oh, I lost a job. It was like, I needed that job. I needed that money. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's just so much shit I was trying to catch up on and get ahead of because when I got injured the first time in 2018, knocked me back. But let's get into the second injury of 2018. So, October 17th, um, 2018, I was driving and, you know, taking care of some errands. I had just came from Costco. I was on my way home. So, if you know anything about Sacramento, the 99 is always crowded. You can go at 4 in the morning. You can go at 9 at night. It's always traffic on a certain part of the freeway. And that's the break off to come back to, like, Stockton. So, to go to San Francisco, that break, right? So I'm driving and this person keeps riding me. So normally when that happens, because I'm used to Cali drivers acting a fool, um, including myself, okay, I'm guilty. But not riding people. I don't like to ride people. I know I can, I used to speed a lot and whoo, Chile. Um, so the person kept riding me, right? And just kind of, and I was tapping on my brakes. That's normally a sign for me or for somebody else. Like, hey, you're riding me, go around. I'm not going to go any faster. So normally, they go around, no problem, right? This particular person decided, I don't wanna fucking go around, I'm gonna ride you forever. So I said, okay, cool. You wanna stay behind me? I'm not gonna judge. So I keep going, so the truck in front of me has stopped short, and he was going slow, so I was not, I was about a car and a half from him. So he stopped short to get off to go to San Francisco to come back to Stockton, right? So I stopped short. The person behind me did not stop. Um, they were going so fast, bruh. I looked in my rearview mirror. All I could do was hold on to my wheel. I kid you not. I couldn't go anywhere. It was traffic, buses, everything coming from, I was in the far right lane, right? So all the left lane, it was about five lanes across. All the other lanes, <laughs> buses, trucks, 18 wheelers, cars, I couldn't get over. So the person slams into the back of my car. I actually put like a little snippet around the time I'm talking about. slams into the back of my car and propels me into oncoming traffic. Now I've been hit from the back, right? So all I can do, it happened so fast, but I'm explaining it slow so you can understand. Um, so I hit from the back, knocked me into oncoming traffic, hit in the front. After that hit from the front, because she had hit me so hard with all that force, I begin to spin across the freeway. Bruh, when I tell you, I couldn't do anything. I, I couldn't do anything. I tried to tap on the brakes, nothing. I couldn't do anything. I just started spinning and I was like, oh my God, please, please, please. So God, literally God cleared the free, I'm not joking you guys. God cleared the freeway. Like, oh, I get so emotional just thinking about it because like it was so much traffic. Like I didn't know how how it stopped at that exact moment but i know that i was blessed enough to have god and my grammy in the car with me to protect me because if oncoming traffic would have hit me i wouldn't have been here like honest to god oh my god i can't i've been super emotional like the past couple days for no reason um so when i started i started spinning the so i got hit twice from the back and on the side, the driver's side in the front. 
it knocked the whole front of my car off it smashed um my hood my trunk and everything in i hit the uh guardrail finally the concrete guardrail stopped spinning i immediately burst into tears <laughs> i couldn't do anything i was like every it looked like a tornado hit my car bro like my car was a fucking mess i didn't give a damn though i didn't care i was like oh my god i'm still alive so after that immediately i felt pain in my left shoulder and i was like shit you know automatically i was like my shoulders fucked like my shoulders messed up so um a guy saw what happened and and like he this guardian angel right here he jumped out of his truck pulled over jumped out of his truck and was like oh my god are you okay and i'm in tears i'm bawling and he's like you know what it's okay you you're scared you're you know you're sh you're in shock but you're alive you're alive and so i'm like oh my god oh my god so he calls the police and i see the person who hit me across the freeway right now i remind you I'm all the way on the other side of the freeway, five lanes away from her. That's how hard that heifer hit me. So her airbag is out, right? My airbag did not pop out, thank God, because my face would have been, my nose probably would have been broken or something, right? So my airbag didn't pop out. So I was like, okay, I don't know whether that's good or bad. But because my seatbelt was trying to save my life, it actually, when I started to spin, because I started to go forward, it actually yanked me backwards. And then I actually sprang my shoulder. So they had to bring an ambulance and I had to be taken to the hospital. They took down all of our information, right? <laughs> I'm laughing because this shit is crazy to me. So they took down all our information and I took an Uber home because my parents were still living in San Leandro. Um, I called my boo, let her know what happened. Um, and my parents get out to here because it took forever from San Leandro around. It was around five. No, it wasn't five. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon when the accident happened. It was like 2.30. So my parents have to come and you know traffic is trash coming from the bay around that time to anywhere out here. So it took them forever to get out here. So I was at the hospital. So I was done. So I was like, I'm just going to take a lift home. So they tell me, you know, your shoulder sprang. I took an x-ray. They said, it's not broken. Thank God, but we're gonna order an MRI. So immediately I had to get a lawyer, right? Because this, listen, you you just fucked up everything. So my car is total. I didn't know what the damage was. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to drive it, if they could fix it, what, right? I like I said, it's a muck thing. I ain't really eating that much. Cause you know when I get in my stories, child. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so they were like, took me to the hospital, right? I'm going home. I'm letting them know, hey, I'm actually on my way home. You know, just meet me there. So my mom's like, you need to get a lawyer. And my parents have had accidents before. I don't think it's been this extreme to where the car got totaled, but I can't fully remember. Cause we've had a couple of cars growing up and stuff like that. The high car. Um, so we've had a couple of cars growing up and like that, right? So, girl, girl. So I get a lawyer. He's not in um, the the Delta Valley. Is, is this called San Joaquin Valley? Um, sorry. Um, he's not down here, basically. He's in LA. So he has somebody who represents him down here. So literally like two days later, right? In the process of doing this, I'm also talking to my insurance. I immediately called my insurance when I got home um, and was like, listen, I was in a car accident. My car is taken by a tow yard. I don't really know where it is um, because they take your insurance information and, you know, let your car insurance know, hey, if you need it, you know, I thank God my mom told me to get uninsured motorists, right? Listen to this shit. So... I find out <laughs> after there, it takes a while for them to do the police report. Like if you ever been in an accident, you know, it's not the next day. It takes weeks and weeks. It took about four weeks for me to get the report. So come to find out this young lady does not have any insurance. So the insurance she picked down on the police report is not correct. I called the insurance. They had no idea who I was talking about. 
they were like, well, we have that name, but it's not that car. And we have that car, but it's not with that name or that VIN number. Complete, like, fraud. Just a fraud, right? So I'm like, well, what the hell? So the guy who hit me in the front, I believe he had to sue her as well because it was not my fault that I was knocked into oncoming traffic. So I don't know what's going on with his control, but that's none of my business. I'm trying to get my eyes together. Oh, so can you stop, Papa? Damn. Um, so then I'm talking about insurance and stuff like that and the lawyers and all that stuff. And he's telling me, hey, if she doesn't have insurance, you're still covered, right? Because you have uninsured motors, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, thank God I got that. Thank God with my mama being smart and telling me, hey, girl, you don't want to do that. Mm-mm. So, oh God. <laughs> so, um, after I got a rental for a little bit, right? When I tell y'all, it's stressful as hell driving after an accident. Like, I was literally in the slow lane all the time. Look at this. Look at this Negro. Scar. What? <laughs> Get down. <laughs> um. So I was in a slow lane all the time. It felt like people were going 800 miles an hour when they were probably only doing like maybe 60, I wouldn't say 60 is California, 75, 80, um, and things like that. And even when I was in the slow lane, people would ride me. So I do not, <laughs> I don't like when people ride up behind me fast now, especially now. Um, when they ride up behind me fast, I get so scared. Like, it's like the shock runs through my body, right? I don't like it. It makes me super nervous, and I can't stand that shit. Like, I don't understand how people do that. It's so annoying. So, all of that, right? So, I'm in between doctor's appointments for my my pelvic pain and my shoulder. My pelvic pain, my shoulder, and my knee. I, uh, listen, last year, this. I'm not saying they're cured, but I, I've been working through some shit okay so i started physical therapy for all this shit in all of it and i'm going to physical therapy and blah 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 i'm trying to get better and doing all this shit right so they tell me she doesn't have insurance but the gag is scar can you please okay you want to say hi say hi everybody because i'm trying to get on the table while mama's trying to talk he's gonna be two you guys can you believe me He's a big boy. I can't give you kisses because I got on makeup and nobody needs that problem. So, come to like, come to find out, you know, she doesn't really have insurance. <laughs> Great. And then the other thing is the gag is they cannot find her. They don't know where she is. Like my insurance, the lawyer, um, the police department, the fire department, they can't find her. The address she put on file is incorrect. Yo, I got hit by a catfish. God damn it. Oh, okay. All right. But the thing is, so here's how I made sure to cover my ass with this. So my lawyer was telling me either I could go after her personally, which I would have to pay all the court fees on my own, all that shit. Or I could have my insurance go after her and they just pay me from my uninsured motorist and, um, just you know from that part and they go after her for the repayment and i'm like what the fuck is gonna happen if they can't find this woman you know what i'm saying like this is bananas right so girl they still can't find her i talked to my lawyer the other day he was like we still don't know where she is we have no clue where she went and only thing you could do is get paid from uninsured motorists so if I had went after her, I probably would have never got no money. So let me tell you what happened with the car. So the car was completely total. They opened up the car. They said everything was cracked, crispy, crunchy, everything, right? I said, well, damn, you damn. So everything was completely total. They totaled out my car and paid it off, right? Thank God. Oh, my God. I was so happy. So then came the process of finding a new car. And that's not fun for me because... My credit isn't that great right now, and I've been working on bringing it up, which just went up a couple points since, you know, last year. Almost 100 points. So it's went up about almost 100 points since last year, which is good. Um, But 
you know when they run your credit, they do a hard credit check on your car. I mean, your credit for a car. And I went to a bunch of dealerships because everybody was like, nah, you good, you good. Or the prices were way too high. So, funny, I went to Hyundai of Stockton. <laughs> Plug, this is, you know, you're welcome. Um, so, I went there and I had found a car first. I thought I wanted it right. And it was like a Ford Tour or something like that. It was like a 95. But my parents were helping me pay it until I got paid. So I was just borrowing it from them to pay it back like the next month, right? So, um, so they were like helping me. Essentially, they got the money back. So anyway, but you know, parents, they, they always got to have a little hold on. Okay. So I think uh, my parents are very like, oh, that's get the right thing. But the way they went about the situation, we had to have a talk about that. I was like, hold up, hold up. So I went to the dealership. And I spent all day at the damn dealership. It's not a short process buying a car, okay? Don't let nobody fool you. Don't let these Instagrammers, YouTubers get on here and telling you, I bought a car. And it's like, made it seem like they just went in that day and gave money and it was out five minutes. No, it's a process. No matter if you have all the money, need a loan, have cash, whatever. It's a process, okay? So I go in there, find a car I like, right? I go drive it around. My dad is like, why don't you take the car into a mechanic and get it checked out? So I said, you paying? I'll go. He paid for it. I said, cool. Because <laughs> I don't have the fucking time. So I go in and get the car checked out. Turns out that particular model had a lot of problems with like the transmission, the battery, stuff like that, right? So they did not initially tell me that. They were just like, ooh, you need to run. And I said, what the fuck that mean? So I didn't really want to listen to them. I'm not going to lie. I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to get my own car. So that's not how it worked out. So they told my fam my mom and my dad that, and they lost their minds. They were like, uh-uh, because we not doing this. And, and I think that my mom is so set on me being her only daughter, her baby girl, that she sometimes doesn't see me as an adult. It's very frustrating, but at the same time, I understand, you know what I mean? Because I was her baby for so long, and it's just like, you have to let go. I'm 30, almost 32, you know? So it's like, I just wanted the respect of like an adult, you know? I pay my own bills kind of thing. I live on my own, I do, I do things for myself. You know, I needed the respect of an adult, you know, not a child, okay? So they come in there, I swear, I, I was like, what the hell is going on with these two? My mom and dad come in there like, no, we're not getting this car, da -da -da -da. And I'm like, oh, who are they talking to? I was automatically annoyed because they came in and they didn't come talk to me. They didn't say, hey, listen, we talked to the mechanic and um, he said that this and this and this, right? And we could have really talked about it. But my parents came in there telling them what I was and wasn't gonna do. Now parents, I know y'all like, you don't have kids yet, you don't understand. But know this, you know what it's like to be an adult though. You know what it's like to do your own stuff. And you know what it feels like for somebody to come in and try to tell your grown self, oh, you're not gonna do this because I say so. Like, oh, uh, hold up. Can we talk this through? Can you ask me what I want? This is going to be my car, okay? So I was already annoyed because I had been at the dealership all fucking day and I was just over it, right? So I sat down and I was so, you know, you get so frustrated, you start crying and I'm sensitive. Okay, I'm a sensitive thing. So I'm annoyed and I start crying because I'm frustrated because I have been there all day. And then they get in there and tell them what I'm not going to do. You know what I'm saying? My parents aren't bad parents at all. They're great parents. They're amazing. But you're not going to do that to me. So my mom's like, okay, well, we were wrong. I'm sorry. They have to like apologize, right? because they just didn't give me the respect of an adult, you know? So then, okay. They were like, well, if you're not happy with the car, let's, let's give you another option. Let's go, the manager came out. Cause I was working with this girl named Brittany. I don't know if she's there still. Um, because last time I went in, I just went in, was it Wednesday? Wednesday, cause they said they needed to do like a check to make sure my car wasn't defective. Um, so, she was helping me, so she went and got the manager. The manager was like, what color car do you want? And I said, for some reason, I don't want gray, 
black or gold. So I said, for some reason, I was really, I was like, blue. I want a blue car. So he was like, okay. He's like, what are the things you want in the car? I said, I want a backup camera. I want Bluetooth. Because I didn't have any of that with um, the car I was in an accident with. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go look something up and I'll be right back. So he goes for like maybe 10, 15 minutes. He's like, hey, can you come outside real quick? So we all go outside and it's like a brand new 2019 Hyundai Accent, right? And I'm like, it's gorgeous, like it's adorable. And it was blue and it was like sparkly blue. And I was like, oh, Steven Universe eyes, right? So I was like, oh my God, like I'm so excited. Y'all, I've never had a new brand new car in my life. This is my first brand new car. Um, I've always had like a used car or something like that over the years and I've never complained because my Camry lasted me about almost five years. So, and that was a 96, okay? And she had a lot of miles when I got her, so I wasn't even mad. The Hyundai, I feel like that was a bad Juju car. Like, a lot of bad stuff happened in that car. Like, my God, okay? My God. Somebody put a hex on that vehicle when they left out that rental. They was like, everything. <laughs> everything you done to me, I'm not already done to you, okay? So I was like, whoo, Chile, and I blessed the car and everything. So, oh, he was like, do you wanna drive it around? So I was driving it and I was just like, okay, this is my car, right? This is the last small car I'm gonna get though. The next one's gonna be like a Hyundai Kona. You know, I think those are adorable and they're not too big. They're not like freaking Tonka trucks, you know what I mean? So, we got the car, right? Very happy with how it worked out with the payments and everything. So, God bless me with that. I'm oh, very happy, right? I've had the car since the end of November. And it worked out perfectly. Because I was able to keep my rental from my car insurance until I had got the new car. So, I was very, very happy with that. Scar keep walking around looking me in my damn face. Because he think he's supposed to eat human food. No. And ain't time to eat. Oh, hell no. They eat at 5 and 5. It's only 117. So. That was everything that happened with the car accident. The young lady disappeared on us. And it's okay. Because you know what's funny? That even if she disappeared on us, God knows who she is. That's the funny part. And so does the universe. So. She might have got away from me. A mere human. But the universe and God knows exactly who she is. Can you stop? Just damn watch. Shut up. Okay. Um, I'm not even trying to connect to Siri. Um, sorry. So yeah. So, ooh, Chile. It's already 32 minutes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to tell you guys about. So, in 2018, I lost a couple of friendships. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say one of them associate. So, the first one, I'm not going to name names because they know who the fuck they are. So, the first one, I had met when I was working at Lush. And we had become close over a short amount of time. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. They were much younger than me. And I normally don't get friends that are much younger than me because of this particular reason. Um, they don't know how to handle like harder life things unless they've been through something really, really hard to humble them. You know what I'm trying to say? So, this person hadn't been through anything like that yet as of I knew them, right? So, I was in a really bad state. Like, I was super, super sad. And I kept feeling like this person kept canceling on me like kept saying I'm busy I'm busy I'm busy I'm busy and I had gotten ready one time and I had got my makeup together and got it off and on and they were like oh I gotta go do this I'm busy so I finally meet up with them and I'm telling them I'm like hey I feel like you keep and I wasn't like your fault your fault I was literally talking like this y'all because I was so depressed by this point I didn't want to argue with nobody <laughs> so I was like hey you know stop papa no so, oh my God, this boy. 
Y'all don't know half the shit I go through with Scar. I just wanna let you know. Hey man, leave my headbands alone. Oh my God, he is doing the most right now. So, um, I had went to go meet up with her finally. And we're sitting down and I'm letting her know like, hey, you know, I don't know if you're having like issues with like maybe time management or like, you know, you know, I don't, I don't think you're doing it on purpose or maliciously, but I, I just think maybe like, you know, I wish you would be there sometimes when I, when we were supposed to hang out because you know, sometimes I just, you know, needed somebody to talk to. I just needed you to be there. When I tell you this shit went left super fast and I did not see this shit coming, like she, she snapped. She just fucking snapped. She was just like, well, okay, whatever. And blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, why do you have an attitude with me? And she literally looked me dead in my face after I told her I was depressed and I just, I felt like, you know, I wanted to let go. She was like, cause you're annoying me. Like, had I been not depressed, I'd have been like, wow, that's fucked up. But okay, bitch, bye bitch. Um, but because I was so depressed, I was just like, it was like, almost like, you know how anger is on Inside Out? You know how it like boils up? I went to the bathroom and I started crying, but it wasn't sad cry. I was pissed off. She made me mad. So I was like, all right, all right. I have control over my my emotions, but oh, I didn't at that time. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. So I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? Like in my brain, I'm like, God, I almost choked. Like, you know how in your brain you, you choke somebody? I had choked this bitch out of my brain. And I was like, are you fucking stupid? Like, why would you say that to me? You know, and the fact that I had been there for her and she had just got a new job, right? I had brought this bitch a gift. I was like, I'm going my motherfucking gift back. <laughs> so I come out the bathroom and we were eating, right? I didn't, I didn't even really eat. I wasn't hungry. I was mad. And I was, I hadn't had nothing to eat all day, but I was mad. So she was on her phone and then I was like, so are you done? And she was like, yeah, I'm done. So we get, cause she rode with me to the restaurant, right? So we get up to go outside. I lose my shit, y'all. I wish I wouldn't have. I lost my shit. I start screaming at her, yelling. And I could tell she didn't see it coming because she was just like in shock. You know, I had this look of shock on her face. I don't apologize for it. What I am saying is, oh, I wish I wouldn't have snapped. Um, I wish I would have just walked away um, and left her sitting at the table by herself and left her there and let her figure out how to get back to work. Because she walked back to work, but she went back to car to, to get her keys and her gift. And I had half a mind to throw that damn gift at her motherfucking ass because it was hard shit in there too. But I was like, that ain't gonna solve nothing. And y'all know I'm not a violent person. I don't believe in hitting people. But I did want to choke her a little bit. Like just, just choke some sense into her, Jesus. So for people like that, I honestly pray that life teaches her to deal with situations better than that. Um, and it made me look at her differently because then she was saying people were doing all this stuff to her. But I'm like, if you reacting like that when people need you, then I can see why they react like that to you. It, every action has a reaction. So we ended our friendship after like a year and I was okay with it because I don't need that kind of energy in my life. I would never be friends with her again. I don't trust her. Um, I wish her... <laughs> Jesus, it t it's hard being a better person sometimes. I wish her the best. Um, I wish her the best for real though. I don't wish nothing bad on her because that's not that's not on me. Um, I think life will handle everything it needs to handle. Um, I hope she get everything she needs out of life, and I hope she get exactly what she wants. So, the second person I actually knew them for a very long time. Um, I met them in oh fast. Oh, um, and he, me and him, I didn't see that coming either, but honestly, it happened because we had a miscommunication, honestly. Um, I don't want to say names because I don't believe in putting people on blast, but at the same time, we had a miscommunication around China Doll's birthday and just a misunderstanding of everything. Um, but at the same time, he was very snappy towards me a lot. 
he was going through something different in his life. He was transitioning. Um, so he was going through a lot of emotions, a lot of change. He was getting a separation from his wife. So um, I think all of that on top of trying to be the positive friend. You know what I'm trying to say? And I didn't need him to be the positive friend. I just needed him to be him. But I also was there for him a lot. He was there for me a lot. I'm not going to take that from him. He was there for me a lot and I was there for him a lot. But I feel like maybe we shouldn't have been there so much for each other only because we were both literally going through the same type of thing but just different situations. Like we were both really depressed, we were both really sad and we were both just trying to get out the funk. Um, so we went out a lot. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I drank a lot last year, a lot. And it was to deal with every single bullshit thing. I was I almost cried. I don't drink like that, you know? So when I started drinking a lot, I got concerned that I needed to do something about it. I've had a grandpa who was alcoholic and I've had family members who are drug addicts and I didn't want to add myself to that list. So I really was focused on trying my best to cope better than the drink like i like to have a little drink here and there you know who does who doesn't that drinks you know but i didn't want it to become a bad habit you know oh god so um long story short because i don't it's complicated order so i tried to fix things with him and the thing was i felt like he turned it into oh it's your fault kind of thing that we're not talking it's just like i technically ended the friendship because i was like i'm tired of this um oh my mom's texting me oh um so i'm tired of all this and i'm tired of this miscommunication and i should have waited to talk to him in person that was my mistake i'll take ownership of that um but at the same time he just wouldn't let it go like he wouldn't be like, okay, you know, we both made mistakes. It was almost like he wouldn't see his mistake. He would just see mine, you know? And I need somebody who's going to understand that we, we're human. You know, we're going to make mistakes. We both are. Um, and I, I just need you to know it's not just your fault. It's not just my fault. You know what I'm saying? So I just needed that mutual responsibility from a friend, you know? But yeah, so... Y'all, that is some of the stuff that has been going on since last uh, June, since I saw you guys. It's been a minute. I know people were sending me messages, and thank you guys so much. Honestly, who hit me up on YouTube, I hadn't really checked my YouTube. I didn't check my email like that. I, didn't, I barely checked fucking social media. I had got off social media for a while. Um, and I just was like to myself, you know? So, thank you guys for all your prayers. Are you concerned? <laughs> all your positive energy um i'm in a better place now like i said i went to an interview today and i feel really good about it um so i'm feeling good today so i was like i need to sit down and let you guys know hey i'm okay um i'm doing better now and i hope you guys are doing better but um 2018 was a lot of lessons like a lot of growth a lot of a lot of i lost a lot of more things a lot of more things what who taught me how to spoke um i lost a lot of things in 2018 i.e a vehicle i.e you know my shoulder got messed up and you know my mobility was messed up for a while and my knee and my condition with my pelvic floor so i gained some things coming back into 2019 and you know it's like well getting up a hill you know you gotta take your time you know and climb the hill so i'm climbing back up the hill to get to the top you know and sometimes you know i know maybe if somebody's going through this and you're in a dark place right now you're so dark you can't see the light i know that feeling but i know that it's super cliche so i'm not gonna say it to you but what i will tell you is that if you can just just push through you know just push through one more day and and try to find something each day more positive or something that you're thankful for whether it be the people in your life whether you could say hey i live in a house by myself or i live in a house you know i have feet i can walk i you know it's something that you're grateful for anything i have breath in my lungs i can breathe you know um you know what I'm saying? Like anything, any small thing. And honestly, my cats had a lot to do with saving my life as well. Cause I was like, I really don't want to leave them behind. 
and I didn't want to take them with me. You know what I'm saying? So I just was like, damn, on top of my mom and my boo and my cats, it was just like, it was a lot more to live for than it was to let go, you know? And I understand the dark moments and I kind of hate when people say, oh, just pray it out, just pray it out. It don't work like that. That's not how that works. But you do know, as my as my boy always says, God invented doctors. God invented doctors who make medication. You know, I, I think people think it's so taboo to believe in God and also go to therapy or take medication for stuff. No, these are mental things that go on and sometimes you need more help. And it's okay to ask for more help, you know? But he's so aggro. He is so aggro. So I just want to stop by and say hi. I know I'm sorry I didn't eat that much, but I really wanted you to tell you guys the story and let you know what was going on in my life. But I hope you guys are doing well. I really, really hope the best for everybody. Can you please, sir, get down. Every time I squeeze the bottle, he jumps. Um, <laughs> so I really wish the best for you guys. I really hope everyone's well. And if you're not well, I'm literally praying for you, sending you positive energy, healing energy, energy to push through the fight to get through another day. And trust me, you are stronger than you think, okay? But that is it, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna try to come back more and do more videos. I really wanted to get back into doing more tutorials and stuff like that. Whoo, Chile, but i will let you guys know but in the meantime i will link all my social media and stuff down below and i will talk to you guys later <laughs> bye <laughs>